Okay, so I just saw your uh, email, and it looks like your exam is coming up, which is why you sent these uh, prior to getting your previous ones corrected, but let's just get to it. Rainfall. A lot of people have a hard time with this because there's so many um, data points here to discuss, so let's see what you did. The given line graph illustrates the record of rainfall in England, Scotland, and Wales across 12 months in 2018. Fine. It is clear that it is clear from the graph that England had the most consistent rainfall pattern in 2018. Good, with readings fluctuating around 100 ml throughout the year and reached not have reached reached a peak rainfall of 150 in July, September, and December. All right, now again, this is really confusing to me because when you use an expression like "it is clear," that's like a signpost that this is your overview. Okay. So avoid using these expressions like overall or it is clear that um, because unless it is your overview, all right? Because an examiner is going to look at this and be like, okay, is it an overview or is it not? So avoid it is clear. I would have just said that uh, England had the most consistent rainfall, like literally just starting here in this sentence, okay? Um, you told me about July, September, and December. And nothing else. Okay, fine. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. The graph also demonstrates, all right, not has also demonstrated. Again, there's absolutely zero reason for the present perfect here. Leave it in the past simple or in the present simple. Uh, both Wales and Scotland had drier months where the rainfall dipped below 50 ml. For Wales, it was April and August to October. As for Scotland, this should be a new sentence, period. As for Scotland, it was February and April. Or you could have said while for Scotland it was April and February. It is most notable that rainfall had plunged below 25 ml for Wales and Scotland in the month of April and February, respectively. Okay. On the other hand, heavy rain over 160 ml was recorded in March and October for Scotland and in July for Wales. Okay. Overall, in 2018, steady rainfall was observed in England. Whereas the other two parts of the UK had experienced greater fluctuation of precipitation. Okay, that's fine. Um, so again, this was good. This was good. I would have put it here. And then I would have taken out this. It is clear that. Okay. So paragraph one, paragraph two, and then this is fine. Um, and then, okay. So uh, a couple of other things. I already told you that this is a uh, line graph that has 36 pieces of information. Obviously, you cannot talk about them all, and you didn't. You selected, I would say, in general, rather well, but there are a couple of pieces of information I didn't have that I actually wanted. You focused only on those highs and lows and nothing else. Um, but that's only part of the story, and that's actually a good word to use, a story. So think about stories. When we tell a story or when we hear a story, what points are important. Well, we want the beginning, we want the end, and then we want the key points in the middle. You were very good about those key points in the middle. You did not, however, give me the beginning or the end. So I do feel like I'm missing some information. For example, I would like to know that rain in Scotland began the year at around 120 and ended the year at like 105 or 110, whatever that is. Okay, so it, in other words, it ended the year slightly below where it began. That's a good piece of information to have. Uh, and the same thing happened in Wales. It ended the year only slightly higher than when it began. Okay, uh, same thing with England. So those are pieces of information that are important. As far as I'm concerned, there's, uh, I think it's 15 pieces of information that are important. Okay, so for example, for England, it's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Okay, those three peaks. For Scotland, point one, point two, point three, point four, and point five. Okay, the beginning, the end, the highs and the lows. And that's the same thing for Wales. So those are things you should have focused on. Um, and you did it for the most part. You focus on those highs and lows. Did you talk at all about this period of stability? That's pretty important. You've got three months that are stable. Um, and it, it's the only place in the graph where we have any stability whatsoever. So for me, that's another important piece of information. So if I was going to talk about Wales, I would have talked about one, two, 
three, four, and five, okay? So it's important to be able to pick out those key pieces there. Um, all right, and then again, careful with your tenses because this occurred in 2018. You're looking at it today. So if you're talking about how the rain fell, you can talk about it in the past tense. But if you want to use things like, like this, illustrates, that's fine, present simple. But there's no reason for other tenses like present perfect here. Okay, now let's take a look about the parents working and staying home. Let's see what you said. Modern societies have seen an increasing number of paternal caregivers and maternal breadwinners sparking debates on the cause of this phenomenon along with its effect on the society. I get rid of the the society. It should just be society. Some suggest it is a positive tend, trend that demonstrates gender equality. Um, I don't like just personally here. Uh, and personally, I strongly agree. There are two separate sentences, okay? Yes, the personally supports what comes before, but I would like to see an and here. This essay will explore the reasons behind the increasing trend and weigh on um, and weigh in on its impact on families using examples from the UK Census and Oxford University to make points for the argument. Okay, fine. So you think it's a positive trend. Okay, and then what's the second question? Let me just double check. Okay, so what are the reasons and is it positive or negative? Fine. There's ample evidence that working moms are increasingly common throughout the developed world, particularly in Western countries. This trend can be largely attributed to advancements in inclusive education over the last, past few decades, enabling ladies in the society, careful with the word ladies, it, it feels a little old fashioned. Some people might even say it's sexist, so try to avoid it. Uh, enabling women uh, in society without the, to land higher income jobs and some even prove to be more stable breadwinners than their spouse. For instance, the UK census data indicates that female university graduates have graduates, graduates, sorry, have almost doubled in 2023 compared to the 1970s. All right, 2023 is past, so it should just be almost doubled, no half. Uh, and of those degree holders who got married, 23% of them had better salaries, IES, than their husband. Therefore, it is conclusively clear that job holding mothers are even more prevalent, ever more prevalent due to improved quality and their higher earning potential. All right, this is interesting. We'll talk about it more. While some may argue that women are better natural born caregivers for their children and that steering away from traditional family roles is inefficient, who said that? Why are you talking about this now? All right, anyway, this conventional concept has become outdated in modern times due to the fact that capability to manage a household should not be restricted by gender. Again, you did this thing with gen due to the fact that you can't just use it like this. It's, it's a fragment. It's not a full sentence. So this is due to the fact that, okay, you need a subject and a verb. For example, surveys conducted by Oxford University demonstrated that 50% of working mothers acknowledge their spouses better at taking care of their child compared to themselves. Thus, it's possible to state beyond doubt that in certain family contexts, male caregivers are more efficient for the family. Okay. Uh, to conclude from the arguments and examples given above, I firmly believe that the surge of domestic fathers and breadwinning mothers is a result of gender fairness in, uh, in both the education system and workplace. Although unconventional in most traditions, it has proven to be beneficial in terms of efficiency for the current household setup. It is particularly that aligning strengths with responsibilities in modern households were increasing their own importance. All right, this is lovely. I really like your conclusion. Um, you can see I read it really quickly and it flowed. I didn't really have to correct any language there. So the conclusion was nice. Uh, I do want to talk about the rest of it. Um, again, I'm going to do some thinking aloud. So you had two questions here. Why are women working and fathers staying home? And is this positive or negative? Okay. Um, you told me that it's positive. So there are handfuls, there are a handful of ways to do this. But before I look at how you did it, let me just point something out. You've got two things to talk about here. Okay. So you talked about this. Mothers are going out to work. In this paragraph, you talked about it quite a bit. All right. That um, increased opportunities for education is the reason why. You talked about the fact that they're earning more money than their husbands is why. Um, so these are the reasons why women are going out to work. You know what you missed? You missed why fathers are deciding to stay home. Okay. 
Because my question to you is this, women are making more money, great, so they wanna work, that makes sense. But why have fathers stay home? I mean, what happened to daycare? What happened to nannies? What is the reason why fathers are abandoning their jobs and their careers to stay home with their children? You didn't answer that anywhere, okay? So you're missing part of it because what could be done in this essay is the first paragraph here, this first body paragraph, talks about this, which you did, and this. And then the second body paragraph discusses why it's a positive development. Okay, does that make sense? So yes, uh, women have higher, um, women have more opportunities for advanced education and this leads to higher income. Um, on the other hand, men are also more uh, comfortable with, uh, more modern uh, gender roles and have really kind of stepped away from gender stereotypes requiring them to be the primary breadwinner. And many men find it more fulfilling to be home with their children, therefore um, increased opportunities for women and more flexible gender roles are the reasons why this shift has happened. Okay, that's what this could have been about. And then, is this positive or negative? I think this is a very positive uh, development because it allows uh, families and couples to work on their strengths. So for example, if a female is more comfortable and is stronger in the workforce, she feels the freedom to, you know, advance her career and, um, you know, excel while being the breadwinner for the family. Um, along the same vein, men who may not feel like they are cut out for you know, the cutthroat world of work may feel better um, working at home or rather being at home with their children. Also, studies have shown that children benefit from seeing their parents in these kind of shifted gender roles. It leads to a more inclusive society, et cetera, et cetera. So do you understand what I'm doing? I told you one reason why women are working, one reason why men are staying home. And then in this paragraph, I talked about why this is a good thing. Okay, so that, based on the way the question is written, is a good way of doing this. Okay, I didn't feel like yours was so tightly focused around the question. Um, like this, for example, I didn't understand it's becoming, okay, I, like, what is this about? Like, I was trying to figure out what the central idea is and how that central idea is um, somehow connected to the question. So I want you to be careful about that, all right? All right, Andrew, that brings us to the end of this correction. Um, there were some good elements here, but again, I really want you to focus on tightening up your structure and making sure that you are answering exactly what they've asked you and using the question as like a basis for the organization of your paragraphs okay it's really important uh it'll help you with your task achievement and it'll also help you with your coherence and cohesion to make sure you're answering precisely what they've asked you and not something kind of peripherally related okay all right so good luck um there's another set of essays coming your way so i'll wait to see those and see how you do good luck